Welcome. Uh, still, uh, we are in uh, a revision of uh, KCAC Chemistry Paper 1 2021. Now, here we have uh, the next question that says state and explain uh, the factors that are considered when uh, collecting a gas. By when collecting a gas. So, when you are collecting a gas by displacement of air, what are we supposed to consider? The factors that are uh, considered when collecting a gas by displacement of air. Now, the factor that's considered here is uh, density. We consider density of the gas. That is whether the gas is less dense or more dense whether the gas is less dense or more dense so if the gas is less dense then the method now that we use to collect that gas we call it uh, upward delivery that method is called uh, upward delivery now if the gas is more dense than uh, air then the method now that we use to collect that gas is called uh, downward delivery called uh, downward delivery now how does the method of uh, upward delivery looks like this is how upward delivery looks like here you have uh, the delivery tip that brings the gas to the gas jar so this is how upward delivery looks like so this is an upward delivery method that is the gas is collected uh, by upward delivery now the reason as to why that gas is collected by upward delivery we said the gas is uh, less dense than air now examples of gases that are collected by uh, upward delivery one is uh, dry hydrogen gas we also have dry carbon two oxide now what about more dense how does the method looks like So this is now uh, downward delivery. Say this is downward. This is downward. This one is said it is upward. That's upward. So the factor we said is uh, density of the gas. That is whether it is less dense than air. It's collected by upward delivery. If it is more dense, it is collected by uh, downward delivery. Now this is how upward delivery looks like. This is how downward delivery looks like. The gases that are collected by upward delivery, number one, is uh, dry hydrogen gas. We also have dry carbon two oxide. The gases that are collected by downward delivery, one, we have uh, carbon four oxide gas. We have carbon four oxide. We have chlorine gas. We have nitrogen four oxide gas. We have sulfur four oxide, and so on. Now, what about uh, the factor that we use? when we are collecting a gas by over water i mean by water now the factor is uh, the gas is uh, slightly soluble in water the gas is, is slightly soluble in water or you can say the gas is insoluble in water So that's another factor. So if a gas is uh, slightly soluble in water, then that gas is collected by over water method. So the method now we call it over water method. It's called over water method. Over water method we also call it uh, downward display of uh, water. Now how does the method look like? This is how the method looks like. You have the delivery tube here. So here you have water. Yeah. 
So this is now where the gas is collected. That is over water method. Now examples of gases that are collected over water method, one is oxygen gas. We also have hydrogen gas. We also have carbon dioxide gas. Now, the next question we have, other than collecting a gas by displacement of air or water, is state another method that can be used to collect a gas. Now, if you want to collect a gas by not using those methods, then you can also use uh, a method like a uh, syringe. You can collect a gas by use of a syringe. And mostly, the gas that is collected by a syringe is a dry gas, a gas that has been passed through drying agent uh, already. Now, another method that you can use uh, to collect a gas is by condensation. You can also use a condensation process. You can also use condensation process. Another method, another, another method that you can use uh, to collect a gas other than by displacement of air or water is uh, freezing. You can use a uh, freezing method to collect a gas. You can use freezing. Another method is uh, by use of uh, liquidification and so on. Now, now next question we have copper oxide that was passed of uh, 4.1 grams. And this 4.1 grams is uh, heated uh, oxide of copper in a combustion tube. Now until there was no further change, the mass of the final product was found to be 3.29 grams. Now, one thing you need to note is that the reaction that occurs there is uh, copper plus uh, copper 2 oxide. Now this one is a hard reaction whereby copper 2 oxide is a reducing agent. So it will reduce this uh, uh, copper 2 oxide to copper. So here you get copper plus uh, carbon 4 oxide gas. Now, the initial mass here, the mass of copper 2 oxide was 4.1. Now the mass that remains obviously a gas is going to escape so the mass that remains is that of copper so the mass of copper now is uh, 3.29 it is 3.29 now can you get now the mass of oxygen can you get the mass of oxygen so here already if you want to fill this table then the mass of copper is uh, 3.29 here that is 3.29 here because that's not the mass of the residue now the mass of oxygen here it will be the mass of copper 2 oxide which is 4.1 the mass of copper 2 oxide which is 4.1 minus the mass of copper that remains which is 3.29 therefore if you do that so if you do now that calculation the mass will be 0 0.81 grams so the mass becomes uh, 0 0.81 grams now the number of moles of copper so how do you get number of moles if you want to get the number of moles then the formula that now we use is uh, number of moles is equals to mass divided by molar mass already we have the mass of copper which is uh, 3.29 so the mass of copper is uh, 3.29 now the molar mass of copper we are given here, the molar mass of copper is 64 here. So the molar mass of copper here is 64. So if you do that calculation, sorry, get uh, 0 0.051. The same case here, use the formula. There's a number of moles equals to mass over molar mass. So I mean number of moles equals to mass over molar mass. So the mass here is 0 0.81. So the mass here is 0 0.81. Divide by, what is the molar mass of oxygen? The molar mass of oxygen here is 16. So divide by 16 here. So now the answer becomes, uh, if you do the calculation, it will be 0 0.051. Now from there now, if you want to get the empirical formula, then you get the whole number ratio. So the whole number ratio you obtain by dividing now each number by the smallest ratio. And the smallest ratio here is 0 0.051. So here you divide 0 0.051. The same case here you divide by 0 0.051. So here the ratio becomes 1. Here the ratio becomes uh, 1. So what is now the empirical formula? The empirical formula now you take copper that's now one, the ratio here, you don't show that. And then now oxygen is also one. So the empirical formula now of uh, that 
compound is uh, CuO, that is a uh, copper 2 oxide. Now, it's the property of copper 2 oxide that was demonstrated in this experiment. The property is a reducing property. The property is a reducing agent. Therefore, copper 2 oxide is it acts as a reducing agent. So it will act so as a reducing agent. Reducing agent is a substance that undergoes uh, oxidation. So you can see from the equation above, carbon 2 oxide, that is carbon 2 oxide, it undergoes oxidation. Adi oxidation uh, means so. Oxidation means addition of oxygen. So here, from carbon 2 oxide, that is from carbon 2 oxide to carbon 4 oxide, that is now oxidation, addition of oxygen. So a uh, substance that undergoes oxidation is a uh, reducing agent. And here, from copper 2 oxide to copper, that now it undergoes a uh, reduction. That's the removal of oxygen. So copper 2 oxide now becomes an oxidizing agent, and then carbon 2 oxide becomes a reducing agent. Good. Now, the next one is uh, draw the structural formula of uh, 2 methyl butuin. So, this is a topic of uh, organic chemistry 1. That is, we have 2 methyl butuin. This is a branched alkene. So, when you are drawing now the structure of this, the first thing you need to draw first is uh, the parent name, and the parent name here is uh, put. The parent name here is uh, butuin. I mean butuin. The parent name here is butuin. So but means four. So you draw four carbon atoms here. So that's now number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. And here you show now bonding. So that's now bonding. Bonding there. Now. Where does the double bond lies? Because this is now an alkene. This is an alkene. So where the double bond lies? The double bond lies in between carbon 1 and carbon... I mean, the double bond lies in between carbon 2 and carbon 3. That is, it lies at carbon 2. So it can lie here, here. So the double bond lies there. So that's now the double bond. Now the rest you complete with bonding. So there, a bond there. Remember carbon has... Uh, it can only form four bonds. So already here we have one. Two, three, four. So here now it remains one. This one has one, two, three. So here we have another bond here. And then this carbon has uh, one, two, three. Now the branch here, from there, what you need to note is uh, to indicate the position of the branch. So the branch lies at carbon two. And the name of that branch is methyl. The name of that branch is methyl. Now what is the formula of methyl? Mobula. What is the formula of methyl? So the formula of methyl is uh, CH3. So where does where do you put that methyl? You put at carbon two, and this is carbon two. So the branch you put it here. You put it here. So that is uh, you draw now methyl here. That is C. That's now H. The other H is here, and then the other H is here. So now that is how you draw the structural formula of 2 methyl but now here you are forgetting to distribute the number of hydrogens. Now the rest you distribute the number of hydrogen atoms here. So here we have hydrogen atom. Here we have hydrogen atom here. Hydrogen atom here. Hydrogen atom here. There is another way that you can do. You can condense this such that it becomes CH3. But it's always good that you open that structure. So that is now how you draw 2 methyl but 2 in. Now the next question, you have bromine water here. Now bromine water was added to 2 methyl but 2 in. Note, note that the hydrocarbon here is an alkene. That's an unsaturation. That is an alkene. So when you react an alkene with bromine water, that's HOBR. What will happen? One thing you need to know is that uh, the color of bromine water is yellow. That's the correct color of bromine water. It's wrong to say that the color of bromine water is orange or green. No. The correct color of bromine water is yellow. And this is now, it contains a double bond. So what will happen is that the yellow color of bromine water will be decolorized. That is, the yellow color of bromine water turns to colorless.
So that's another observation. That is yellow color of bromine water turns to colorless. Observation when you are writing, tell us the initial color. So the initial color was yellow and then the final color is colorless. Now name the type of the reaction that takes place. So this type of reaction is called addition reaction. Twenty twenty one. Until we meet our next lesson, I wish you all the best. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much.